Welcome to Gomez Workshop. Ah, Tuesday. Ah, yeah, sort of afternoon. We've just been eating sausage and chips. Very nice it was. I had a gherkin, I just thought I'd let you know that. Uh, not that this has any relationship to any type paintball repairs or anything. But I just thought you might, might like to know, yeah? <laughs> anyway, uh, today I'm doing a Lux for uh, Cal from uh, UKS. It's one of the SPS boys, um, plays at CPPS. I said I'd blueprint his Lux. And um, as soon as I say that, I know everybody in Paintendom goes, Woo, what's blueprinting? Blueprinting is where we make sure that um, all the dimensions on the gun are exactly as they should be. If they're over or under, we make up the difference with the O-rings in between. It means your gun runs better, it runs sweeter, and it runs more efficiently. Um, it's quite an important thing to do. You'll hear, you've probably heard the term blueprinting from the motorsport world, which is where they blueprint engines. But uh, what blueprinting means is return to original spec, yeah? So uh, I'm gonna move the camera now, do you a different angle. Um, we're just sort of just gonna vaguely run through what I do, all right? I'll see you later. Bye bye. Hey, here we are, it's famous hands times. Um, I thought we'd just start with um, the regulator on this Lux. So the regulator has the most important job to do. Um, it has to operate fast, quick and clean, and consistently, time after time after time. Otherwise your shots go up and down. So uh, what I have here is uh, Kelb's Lux, which I've already taken the regulator off. I'm just going to pop that to one side. And I'm just going to pull the regulator down here. Now, obviously, this is a regulator that is disassembled, but basically, that's your assembly there. Your piston sits in there like so. This screws in there like so, holds the uh, regulator piston in place. I'm not going to go through how a regulator works. It's all available on the internet. That's not what we're here to do. Now, what I'd like to show you, um, this is a, uh, a standard regulator piston. Now, basically, what I will do with this regulator piston is I will remove all the right hang angles I'll then check depth of the groove and the outside diameter of the piston to the inside diameter of the regulator and the uh, corresponding frictional fit of the O-ring we're going to use in there. We want the piston to slide freely but not so freely that air will get past it, okay? Because again, we'll be back into that. Shot's going up and down. And uh, here's one I've done earlier. Now this is a, uh, a rounded piston. Uh, the very bottom of the piston here is much more rounded, um, there's no sharp edges here. On this one, which is the standard one, there's a sharp edge where you push the uh, lower regulator piston seal in, okay? And I take all that off, I machine all that out. Um, all the uh, transport um, surfaces, they're the barts that slide over any O-rings, uh, they're all polished out and then I cross hatch them. Uh, if, they're, if anything's polished too much, it won't hold any lubricant, remember that. Um, then what I'll do is the actual groove for the O-ring. I'll, um, you know, I'll, I'll be measuring that up, um, we'll see how that goes. If I feel that it's too shallow, I will uh, take something out of there. Uh, I mean, we're only talking microns. Um, every time I take something out, I will put the piston back in again, and I will actually check that for its fit. Now there's no point in me um, going through how I do these operations because I do all these operations on a lathe. Uh, it's not really something you can do at home, not with any degree of accuracy, okay? So uh, I'm going to assemble this piston together now and then we're going to move on to the bolt on the body of the gun and I'm going to show you how I get really low frictional fits there as well, okay? So uh, enjoy for now and uh, we'll see you in a minute. <laughs> anyway, so... I've shown you the difference in the pistons, although, yeah, fair enough, I've had that a close-up, you've got to take my word for it. Um, so, I have a uh, polished piston that's been cross-hatched, sold its lube, um, groove has been reduced, all the right angles have been removed, and I have a standard piston. Now, what I want to show you here is frictional value, okay? So, we have a standard piston and a standard regulator. We're going to put the standard piston in, and we're going to try and move this piston up and down, okay? and it is very very stiff in there so what I'm going to do next is we're going to take the uh, the better piston here 
for uh, want of a better word, I don't know what we can call it. Blueprinted piston, there you go. And we're going to fit that. Notes, yes, it does have a different O-ring arm, don't worry about that for now. And now, instantly, oh, that is nice. That is so much better. So, that will equate to better um, consistency, basically. Your shot-to-shot -shot strings would be much better. Now, just a quick uh, overview on O-rings. I think you can see these three O-rings I have here. Uh, three different types, three different materials, three different hardnesses, yeah. Um, different O-rings produce different results with different frictional coefficients. Oh, I don't want to go into it too much because... Um, uh, out of everybody watching, there's probably only one person going, oh, that's really interesting. <laughs> All the others are going, <laughs> is he finished yet? <laughs> Just, anyone calls me James May, I am going to poke you in the eye with my screwdriver. <laughs> poke you in the gums with my screwdriver. So, uh, just show you that. Now, what I do want to point out here is that I want to show you that none of these O-rings are black rubber O-rings. Doesn't seem to be... Uh, make any difference how much I tell you guys not to use black rubber o-rings on moving surfaces I keep seeing it more and more and more now rubber very grippy There's a reason why we make car tires out of it because it's grippy <laughs> yeah. So you only use a black rubber o-ring in an area that doesn't move Yeah Like these ones here these o-rings then move okay fair enough when you take the bolt out but they're not a travelling surface like the O-rings that surround the bolt. You get in the picture. Yeah, the more slippery the O-rings you use, the better sort of frictional coefficient and mm, efficiency will come into it. But it's really the consistency we're looking for and losing any first shot drop off. You know, uh, O-rings play a big difference. We'll do more on these body O-rings in the uh, next session that we're going to do for this. But uh, basically, that's our new piston. This is a bl now uh, a blueprinted piston. I've matched it to the bore of the um, internal part of the regulator there. We're going to reassemble this now. Uh, we'll loop this up. I'm going to uh, check the O-ring and fit in the bottom of the piston. This part down here. And there you see again, that's... That one there is quite tight. So that's the next one we're going to do. And just inside here, in your uh, FPS adjuster, there is another O-ring. Um, it don't look too bad, but uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a selection of these O-rings and I'm going to measure them. And um, what I'm looking for here, because it's uh, the piston passes through the centre of the O-ring, I'll be looking for the biggest O-ring I've got biggest o-ring I've got will give me the least amount of frictional grab on this piston um, shaft here okay so uh, I'm going to get the piston back together put that o-ring in then and then we're going to move on to the main fire chamber okay all right we'll see if you're still with me I'll see